over a cake. This isn't about cake. You guys realize this, yes? This is not about the cake. Rape is not about the sex. It's about the consent. No one's upset you had sex. They're upset that they didn't consent to it. Nobody cares about the cake. It's about consent. <laughs> Moving into this, I need you to have an open mind and recognize people are not a monolith and we are all different and we experience things differently. My hope in going through these stories is that we will understand ourselves better and the people around us and we will not destroy friendships and relationships and marriages because of simple miscommunications. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna show you a TikTok first. These are sisters. This is not a romantic couple. So let's see what you guys think initially and then we'll discuss it for a bit. When your sister promised you a Nanala cake, I don't know what that is. It's that little green person on TikTok. Cake for your birthday. That's the caption. Nanala. Ta da! Oh. <laughs> it's a strawberry shortcake. Where's Nanaland? I didn't do a Nanaland cake. Uh... <laughs> I didn't do a Nanaland cake. Josie, it's too hard for me. You didn't do Nanaland? <laughs> Okay, well. Listen. There's literally no Nanaland? It's beyond my skill. Is Nanaland inside the cake? Yes, it's Nanaland inside. You kind of just put dye that green and put a couple of eyes? Yeah, I couldn't do it with all the fun. I barely survived making this cake. Okay, it looks really good, eh? Nice cake. So, initial thoughts. And for those of you who have already seen it, what did you think? What are your thoughts on this? What do you think of the girl? What do you think of her reaction? What do you think about her neurodivergent, not neurodivergent? Like, I mean, again, I have an algorithm that's showing me a lot of neurodivergent people. I'm kind of assuming she is. What do you think about the recording of it? What do you think about everything? So for some people, let's see, I get both sides. Why didn't the sister tell her before? Uh, kind of childish, a bit ungrateful, but siblings are siblings. Is that your, a kid's show, right? I don't know if it's literally a kid's show, but it's all over TikTok. It's like a green puppet who sings kind of funny, I assume. She might be on the spectrum. Apparently it's the best cake ever. Is this person neurotypical? I don't think so, but I don't know, you know? Discord says, I wonder why the sister couldn't make the cake she wanted, but the reaction from the girl was handled well if she is neurodivergent. The sister said it was outside of her skill set. So that's why she couldn't get the cake she wanted. You know, um, let's see. You guys think she's neurodivergent? Bro, I'd be upset too. At least the sister explained why she couldn't do it. How do you feel the fact that she explained on the, at the event as she was pulling off the cake, like lid? Do you think she should have like warned her sister ahead of time? Do you think it's kind of like, why didn't you just tell me beforehand? You know, is this something new to the sister? Has she done this before? Hannah says, initially, I just felt bad that she didn't get the cake she wanted, but also understood the cake is hard to make. Mmm. Bontella says, seems neuro a bit. Genuine, she was looking forward to it. Uh, she's experiencing her hopes getting let down in the moment, for sure. I think that's true. I would have given my sis a heads up. Hey, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Yeah, what do you think about the fact that she didn't even give her a heads up, bro? What do you think? Because I was like, why not a heads up, though? You know? Abby says, I can understand her disappointment, but I think the reaction is a little too much. Joy says, if promises have been made, I get the feeling of disappointment, but it also felt like her reaction was expected. Oh, like, do you do you think they knew she would react that way? Did you see the guy petting her head? I thought that was interesting, which is what made me kind of assume she was neurodivergent as well. She, re she sounds like it. She has the look. And he had to pet and soothe her, and they had to explain it to her very calmly. Kind of like because they're maybe used to a communication softness needed like they're not talking to her like you would talk to a friend who's like ah, sorry bro <coughs> like that's not the that's not the tone right the tone is very soft and considerate and thoughtful but yet not thoughtful enough to warn her ahead of time you know what I mean Ali says more sister works so hard their parents were trying to regulate her yeah I'm not sure if it's parents or friends they all kind of sound young so I'm not sure if it is parents but it could be parents <clears throat> Tara says, I felt her disappointment. That's why I'm trying not to set expectations. Mm. Oh, Nanalan is the Canadian late 90s kids show. Oh, I didn't watch it growing up. Interesting. Gracie's button says, I have an autistic sister and it's so important to warn her when changes are happening if you can. 
yeah, the transitional change expectation, 100%. Oh my God, you guys remember my Fry story? I literally, I don't even have diagnosed autism or anything. I'm not saying that I have autism, but any change in my schedule, any change in expectation, usually I can go with the flow pretty good. But if I, I remember I was at a restaurant with my husband and I was really, really tired. We had been up for like 36 hours. We were doing government appointments. It was exhausting. And I was like, can you please just get me fries? I really want fries. Oh, I want fries so badly. He's like, yeah, I got you. I'll get you fries. I was like, great. So I was like, I'm going to pee. I'll come back. I went to the bathroom. He ordered. I came back. Our food arrived and the fries he ordered were like specialty fries with like sauces on them. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? And he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I, I wanted fries. He's like, I got you fries. I was like, these aren't fries. These are fries with sauce on them. I want fries. Fries come dry. And then you decide how much sauce you want on them. I don't like soggy food. I don't like sauce food unless I'm mentally prepared for it. I don't eat textured food like that. And like we looked at each other and I was like, okay, I'm just having like a very neurodivergent moment. No big deal. He's like, but you said you wanted fries. I was like, I, these are not fries. <laughs> like we sat there and I was like, I get it. I get it. Right. The thought is what counts. Y you know what else counts? <laughs> Expectation. Okay. I could have just ordered my own food. You know what I mean? But also not a big deal. We can move past it. But the feelings inside my body were like soul crushing. I felt like my whole world got crushed. And I was like, it's fries. But it's, it's, it, I know logically. So you're thinking, well, logically it's just fries. 1000% bro, chill. It's just fries. But that doesn't change the fact that there's like so much shooting off in your brain at the moment where you're like, I had an expectation. Why isn't it the expectation when I, could have because I could have avoided this if I just did it and then you're like oh you know it's just again I all oh my god discord says this is why I hate surprises I'd prefer to be let down beforehand rather than a fake reaction that will go over well I hate surprises one of the rules like no surprises my partner knows no surprises I don't like surprises I've never liked them my whole life I don't like them Sam I am I don't like them do not do surprises for me it pisses me off but this is about love languages, which I know were made up by some white guy who wanted to control his wife. But still, I think actually work pretty well when it comes to humans. I think categorization works well. This is about miscommunication. This is about people you love the most not seeing you enough to understand why they're giving you the gift in the first place. If you're giving a gift to somebody, I think it should be about the person receiving the gift, not about the person giving it. So when people give you a gift, but they are like overpromised, I think it, it, when it's your job to comfort them for overpromising, I think you're now turning it into a story about them, which I think is what's also so like frustrating because I think people would be very chill if they weren't always surprised with the disappointment. She could have just told her sister ahead of time. She could have literally apologized profusely way before this event and said, girl, I'm so sorry. I realized as I was doing it, it's super hard. Or she could have gone and gotten a cake done. Like, why didn't she just get the cake done at like Walmart or something? And I know everyone's going to say we don't know her, their financial situation. We don't. But I think they can scrounge up $30. Maybe. I'm making an assumption because like they could buy the ingredients. I feel like cakes, if you, you know, Costco cake ain't that expensive. But maybe it is. So, okay, fine. Uh, Rhoda says if she's autistic, it's weird. It's a weird move to film it and put it on TikTok knowing that she'll react. I have no context at all though. Yeah, I went to her. So this is, I think, her TikTok channel. So I'm not sure. Actually, wait. Yeah. Okay, she has like, oh, I think it's, oh, this video has 20 million views. Holy crap. No bio yet, 3,100 followers. It's mostly animals, which is pretty cute. So it's all cat stuff. Um, I don't think, you know, she meant to do anything more, but she, I think she posted the video. I think she posted her own video. So to be fair, I don't think her family put it on the internet. I think she did. From my understanding, I'll get here. I'll send you guys the clip so you guys can check it out as well. Um, which I think is fair if she like after the fact is like, oh, this is funny. And look, this is proof that she probably does have a sense of humor because she, you know, cake fail, funny, like she, I don't know. I think she's taking it well after the fact, but I don't actually think anything about her reaction was that big of a deal. I feel like she was being overly nice. I honestly probably would have had more of a re reaction. I probably would have had a little bit of like, I'm much more expressive. Like you guys know, one of the reasons I think people feel like I'm very combative is because my face, like I don't hide a lot of my expressions. And so I would have been a lot more like, but also to be fair, my mom is a pretty good gift giver. She's like really good at it. 
So if she asks us, like, she knows what kind of cakes I like. And even if she gets a cake that's like a experiment, she'll be like, okay, I bought you this cake, but it's a little different than what we normally get. And I was like, okay, that's enough for me to be like, okay. But she's also okay if I don't like it. My mom would never care if I didn't eat the cake she bought me because she knows like it might not be what I want. She also knows I don't love cake. You know what I mean? So when I do like cake, I like a very specific kind of cake or I won't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, this wasn't a tantrum. Oh, yeah. I think she was really reasonable. I think she reacted totally nicely. I wouldn't put any of this as like a reaction really because if that's a reaction, holy shit, I must look crazy to people because I would have been like, um... What is this? <laughs> what is this? You know? I don't know. Like, I would have been... Yeah, Ingrid says I would have been like, what the fuck is this? Yep. <laughs> Wait, literally same. I would have been like, um... <laughs> what's going on? You should have seen me at the, the fries incident. The waitress knew. She knew something was up. And I looked at her. I was like, you're totally fine. And I even tell my partner. I was like, you're totally fine. But I might wage war over this. Like, I might actually go to war over, like, not getting the fries I wanted. But not literally, right? Like, not literally. Ooh, CJ says, I think her negative reaction lasted a bit too long for an adult. Um, I assume you mean a neurotypical adult. I also assume you mean an adult in your bubble. And also to your standard, right? Because, like, we know for a fact lots of adults throw tantrums, neurotypical or neurodivergent. But I do think she handled herself really well for an adult who was promised something. She wasn't, like, again, a promise... I think there's a lot of misconception about expectation. You know what I mean? Like expectation is really interesting. And there's a lot of like trauma that could also be associated with it. I think sometimes even though I talk about my conservative parents and all things that went wrong, one thing they also went right with is that they allowed us to be allowed us to have preferences and speak our mind. They like allowed us to say out loud, I don't like that. You know? I don't like that. You know what I mean? And I think that that's the thing that in other homes, you're never supposed to say you don't like something. You're just supposed to like smile and accept the gift. But I grew up in a family that allowed you to say, ooh, I I don't like it. And I think there's so much freedom to that. Now, to be fair, the video is only 48 seconds long. So did you guys think her reaction was too long? Discord pointed that out saying reaction lasting long for an adult. It wasn't even a minute long. Yeah, what do you think about that? It's a 48 second video. Is that very long? You know what I mean? CJ says, that's why I said too long. I think some disappointment is to be expected, but I think we all have to consider her sister's effort in making and getting the cake. Okay. I think that is a fair assessment. I think this is where I want to say our bubbles deviate. Though I think you should always give credit to people making an attempt, you should also consider the person you're making the attempt for. Madam Genevieve in the chat. What up, Madam Jen? Getting let down when you've had your expectations set beforehand sucks. I agree. Now, I do not expect disappointment because most of the people in my life do not disappoint. And if there is disappointment, it's internally, yes, about me, but also it's about the idea of overpromising from people right? The reason most of the people in my life do not disappoint me is because they tend not to overpromise. One of the negotiations I made with my partner is do not overpromise to me and I will almost never be disappointed in you because it's when you overpromise that I get very frustrated because it feels like a lie. It feels like you're lying now and that frustrates me, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the um, Reddit story Oh, the original Kate Gate story. And again, I want you guys to remember, no one is has the wrong answer. Nobody's making the wrong answer. Whether you're the people who just want her to be grateful she got a gift or you're the person who's disappointed by the gift, I think what this means to, means to do is separate us into categories of expectation. So I expect no overpromising, therefore no disappointment. So when I do have to handle disappointment, it's not a big deal. I'm not used to being disappointed because I'm used to people who don't overpromise. But when you start to overpromise, it gets to a line where it feels like a lie, right? So again, I love the best intentions effort. I love taking people with a grain of salt. I love all of those things. But because I think I'm a thoughtful person, I would also think to warn people when I can't deliver something. So in some ways, though your intentions are great, I don't think it's fair to lie to your sister up until the reveal, knowing you disappointed her. Like, just think about that. She knew her sister would be disappointed. They all got ready to comfort her. 
They didn't warn her. They gave her no, like, they literally set her up. What do you guys think about that? Why would you set somebody up to be disappointed? Right? That's how it has to be from certain perspectives. But then the other perspective is, oh, I just didn't think it was a big deal. It's a cake. Who cares? Exactly. Who cares? Well, the person who built the expectation. And if you care about them, you would think about that expectation. But if you care about them, but you don't know how to expect or, or how to um, predict that expectation, then we can talk about the nuances of maybe we're not compatible. I'm going to read to you the Reddit story that initially went pretty viral and caused one of the biggest discussions on my Discord because we all fit into different groups. Wait, CJ, interesting, says, I see that you would take, I also see it that you would take all the fun out of it if you don't do the traditional hide the cake part of the birthday. What is that? What's the hide the cake part? <gasps> oh, I've never heard of this. Is this a different bubble thing? What is this? I've never heard that. We always picked out our cakes as kids. We always knew what cake we were getting or we made our own cakes. What is hide the cake? <gasps> what is that? What is that? What is it? Is that a thing? Please educate me. What is hide the cake? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that my whole life. What is it? Please tell us. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This is what I'm saying. What is that? How do you know what that is? What culture is that? What bubble is that? Did you guys have a hide a cake thing? We never had surprise cakes growing up. Everybody got to pick their cake. That was the best part of your birthday. It's like you picked a cake. Oh, Hannah says, I don't do hide the cake, but my boyfriend's family does. Okay, cool. CJ says, we usually cover the cake in some way, even if it was chosen. Inch Interesting. Madam Genevieve says, I wouldn't choose my own cake, but I would give ideas of what I wanted. The cake was never hidden though. Interesting. Okay. Lakara's never heard of hidden cake. Interesting. Okay, but it happened. So Hannah and CJ both are either people or no people who hide the cake. Okay, very cool. Now we're learning. So this is exactly my point, right? Uh, this is exactly my point. We all have different bubbles and cultural expectations, right? So I want us to be very open-minded that there's not a good guy or bad guy in this story. There's preferences. And when you're dating or in relationships, this is a values issue. My partner and I have already talked about it. We don't wanna do gift giving in our relationship. But for some people, they're like, can you believe your husband doesn't get you a gift? And I'm like, please do not get me a gift. Like, you're going to give me anxiety. Like, don't surprise me. Like, if anything, I'll pick it out myself. I'll just buy my own gift. Thank you. So again, it's like, what does that mean? It's just a preference for people. But for some people, they're like, oh, that's awful. I can't believe you don't give gifts. And I'm like, well, it's not about that. It's about loving people and understanding when you're like compatible in those ways, right? Kayla says, everyone knows the cake is there in my experience, but the family pretends to hide it and acts like it's not coming. What? What? Why? That's so funny. Okay, cute. CJ says, so they still wanted to surprise her in a positive way and they hoped she'd not be too disappointed and the cake was different. Okay. Yeah, obviously nobody here is evil. Like nobody here is a bad guy. You know what I mean, right? Like no one's like no one's being mean. It's just different. I, 34 male, had a birthday just yesterday. And my girlfriend, 36 female, offered to bake me a cake. I told her that I would prefer a chocolate cake, devil's food, with chocolate icing, nothing fancy. Now, okay, just so we have context, because I also love devil's food. It's one of my favorite cakes. And I'm very picky about cakes I like. So here's, okay, this is a this is the cake. So chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. It's really, really dense. The reason I don't eat cake is the texture throws me off. It like makes me really uncomfortable and I can't swallow my food. I will eat it, but I'll, I can't eat it. I can't, I, my husband tried to give me this cake for New Year's and I literally couldn't eat it. I was like, Ugh, I'm not eating that. So I love a devil's food cake. It's one of my favorites. Okay, super, super, this is what it looks like. Yes, everybody could see it. Okay, let's go back to the story. I told her that I wanted the cake. Okay, she is usually a great baker, but I guess she thought that wasn't sophisticated enough or something. So he's coming out a little defensive, coming out a little defensive. She baked me a chocolate cake with vanilla icing between two layers of cake, then surrounding a chocolate frosting. Okay, so not what he asked for. That's not what he asked for, right? The cake was fine, but I was... Uh, but I was disappointed because it was not what I wanted. 
fair. The cake was fine, but he was disappointed. She must have noticed and asked me if I was disappointed, so I was honest with her. Yes, I was disappointed. It wasn't the cake I asked for, so I said, if I wanted vanilla in my cake, I would have asked for vanilla in my cake. So he's throwing a little bit of a tantrum. He's saying his feelings, but he's also being like very, he's like a little triggered about it. Okay. I didn't make a scene. I didn't pout. I would argue that's a version of pouting. I even ate half a slice. Good. The chocolate part. Fair. She got upset with me and said, but I've made vanilla cake before and you liked it. And I pointed out that I don't mind vanilla icing, but it's not what I wanted for my birthday. Fair. I'm an on again, off again vanilla. I like it when I want it, but I don't like it if I don't want it. Right. Her feelings were hurt and she even pulled a quote, I'm not going to make you cake next year. So she also became a child and retorted with a triggered response. Right. Which I replied with, I will order my own cake and get my money back if they don't do it the way I like it. Okay. So they're kind of like in one of those weird couples where like, that's the argument. Okay. Apparently that was the last straw. She asked me to leave later, texted me that I embarrassed her in front of her kids. And now she won't reply to my messages. So they're not married, they're dating and her kids are involved. So a lot of emotions on the table there. I think birthdays are important things. That's subjective. And I feel like I was honest with her when she asked me, I didn't want to lie. He sounds, he sounds a little like he's got preferences. My friends told me that I should be great, should have been grateful that she made the cake at all especially one that I've eaten and liked in the past. Maybe I overreacted a bit, though I don't feel like I did and hope to get a second opinion. Am I the asshole? Don't you love that everyone asks Reddit and no one goes to therapy? I think they both need therapy, obviously. Edit, after looking at the comments, I've apologized to my girlfriend for being the partial asshole, but also asked her to apo for an apology as well because she it looked like the results were about 50-50 on whether I, whether I was or wasn't, at least when I skimmed them. He's autistic, right? Like, go to therapy, right? Like, you only apologized because Reddit said so, and now you want her to apologize. Asking people to apologize is a child move. You don't ask people to apologize, guys. Okay? That's, like, their business. If they apologize, they apologize, but you don't ask people to apologize. She hasn't replied yet, but I assume I'll hear from her today. She probably is just thinking about how the best she can apologize to me. Okay, if this is real, right? Um, And, again... I love already, I see Lakara says over a cake. This isn't about cake. You guys realize this, yes? This is not about the cake. Rape is not about the sex. It's about the consent. No one's upset you had sex. They're upset that they didn't consent to it. Nobody cares about the cake. It's about consent. <laughs> it's not about the cake. The cake is the distraction of the conversation, right? It's not about the cake. It's about the consent. It's about the relationship of expectation. It's about communication skills. It's about so many other things. It's not about the cake. None of this was ever about the cake, which is the point I want to give. It's not, it never was about the cakes. It's not about the sister's cake. It's not about this cake. It's literally about feeling seen, understood, loved enough to be considered those little details. It's about having relationships that care about the details. That's what it's about. It's like my partner knows I fucking hate bananas. I hate bananas. I hate them. He knows I hate them. It's like him getting me a cake with like, oh, but only the corner of it has a banana on it. It's like, but just don't get the banana at all. Or I like blueberries sometimes, but not all the time. And it's like him getting me a blueberry cake when I wasn't like totally in the mood for it. It's like, that's not what I wanted though today. I'm the kind of person that will make me a full ass meal and if it's like not what I want, I'll just put it back in the fridge and I'll make something else. Like I can't just eat food because it's there. Like I'm not in survival mode anymore, right? So in survival mode, you eat what's put in front of you. But in a life where you're an adult and you you can actually have the life you want, it feels kind of weird to like force yourself to do that when it's not honest. See, this is why I say people don't want authenticity as well. When girlfriends say, are you disappointed? She didn't want his authentic opinion. See, I would have wanted it. And then I would have said, hey, what is this about? Who in your life didn't get you a cake? You know, who in their life didn't get you a cake, my bro? Because this obviously is not about cake. It's most of the time, it's not even about the thing you're upset about. It's about something that is linked to your trauma or something that reminds you of something. It's not about the cake, right? Joy says, lack of communication on both parts, it sounds. A lot of surface level emotional intelligence. Yes, I agree with that. Obviously not each other's soulmates probably, right? 
They're not even considering the details of the consciousness they're with. <clears throat> Allie says to me, if someone bakes me a cake, I'm thankful that there's cake. Yeah. So I think a big part of this too is the nuance of knowing the person you're with. Guys, if you're with somebody who literally like is a specific consciousness, which we all are, don't you think it's a little fucking arrogant to just, you'll get what you get and you should just like it. You should just be grateful for what I give you because that's the other part of this. The other part of it is that toxic thinking of you should just be fucking grateful. I got you a fucking cake. What else did you want? What's the difference between I tried my best and you should just accept it? Why are you complaining? Right? There is a difference here. Where's the nuance? If there's nuance for that side of like, hey, they tried their best, then there should be nuance on the side of, oh, they were disappointed. That sucks. It sounds like it sucks for everybody. But ultimately, this is about communication. This is about values, right? Blueberry says, why did she ask if he wanted what he wanted if she wanted to do what she wanted? That's, that's how I read it. Like, why are you asking me what I want if you're not going to get me what I want? Like, weird take, bro. But also, for some people, they're like, what's the big deal? It's cake. It's not about the cake. I would never ask my partner, what specific video game do you want? And then get him something else and be like, hey, it's close enough. What? Oh, I really want the Smash Bros with all the traditional Nintendo 64 games on it. Okay. And I get him the Smash Bros without it? This would actually be my gift, but <laughs> that's like, it's not the same gift. It's like, it's not the same gift. Usually you put on a fake show for, let's say, a grandma in your life who gets you a gift she thinks is close enough. Well, then you go, oh, thanks, grandma. But like, you're lying to her so you don't hurt her feelings. Do you want people to lie to people so they don't hurt their feelings? Or do you want people to be honest like, oh, that's not what I expected. And this is why I say people don't want authenticity. What they want is to feel comfortable. They want to feel like they're good enough no matter what they do. And they also want to feel like people can never complain about what they do. And I'm saying, well, what if you guys just communicated and actually said, hey, I think this hurts my feelings. Can we do it better next time or do it different? And then that person can decide if that's what they want to do. But they don't have to do it. Nobody has to do any of it, right? Discord says he communicated clearly and she went against it. A bit, not a big deal. He's not an asshole. Yeah, I think they're both obviously immature. But I think that, I think it's always weird to ask people what they want and then not do it. You know what I mean? It's just kind of interesting, you know? But again, it's probably rooted in trauma or feelings of like neglect or being told your whole life like, you know, but it's not about the cake, right? It's just not. It feels like this. It feels like when you've been in abusive relationships your whole life and you end up in a somewhat good one that's less abusive, you're like, wow, I've never been treated like this. This must be what a good relationship is. And you're like, oh, not even close, girl. And then you actually get into a healthy relationship. You're like, oh my God, it wasn't even close. You only know what to expect by what your upbringing is. So if you've grown up in an upbringing that is like used to considering your feelings in a specific way, like in my family, my mom is very considerate about gift giving. Like she's very thoughtful. So if she asks her kids like, what kind of cake do you want? Or she'll give us choices. Like she gets that delivery. Not because we're entitled or spoiled, but because we would have accepted any cake she got us or maybe not eaten it. See, that's the problem. My family's not a good example because my mom wouldn't care if we didn't eat the cake. Like it wouldn't have been rude not to eat the cake someone bought you for your birthday because like we're not going to force you to eat food. What do you guys think? I would love to hear all perspectives because I know this is like probably more cultural than anything else. And there's tr guys, there's trauma rooted in this. This got to be about trauma as well. You know, gaming says I've had women do similar things to me in the past. Ask me what I want, hoping the lines up. Hoping it lines up with what they want. When it doesn't, they just do what they want and expect you to be happy. Yeah, see, that's so fucked up. I feel like that's super fucked up. Miss Fishy says, what would be the mature way for this scenario to play out? Okay, if this was my scenario, to be honest with you, I probably would have gotten slightly triggered because I didn't expect it not. Again, if you do not, if you overpromise to me, my brain, if you overpromise and you say, I'm going to get you exactly what you asked for, I'm like, cool, you can handle it. And this is also connected to my trauma around being hyper independent because, again, I just want things to be, I don't need them to be done perfectly. I just like, you only have one life to live. You might as well get the cake you fucking want for your birthday, guys. It's not that fucking hard. It's like 20 bucks. Just like get the cake you fucking want. Make it. Anyways, so 
if this was my brain and I asked for something specific and my partner didn't warn me and then was like, do you like your cake? I'd be like, oh, it's not exactly what I wanted, but you know what? Fuck it. We'll eat half. We'll eat what I can. Thanks, babe, for trying. But like, yeah, kind of fucked up. Kind of dropped the ball. Kind of dropped the cake. You know, I would just communicate because in my mind, he doesn't want me to lie to him, right? <clears throat> like, I'm not going to lie to my partner. I don't give a fuck if it hurts his feelings. Obviously, I'm going to say it in a way that he can hear me and I'm going to consider his feelings, but he's also trying to consider mine. So the mature way for it to be was to communicate and have it be a safe space to communicate. But I have a feeling it wasn't because they communicated so childish to one another. Like, oh, you embarrass me in front of my kids? What fucking kids? Who cares about your fucking kids, bro? Like, oh, what does that mean? Like, obviously, this isn't about the cake. Right? I threw it on the ground. Yes, Lakara. Again, I think I would say, oh, my God, I, good job on trying to get the cake. Not what I wanted. Can we go to the store and get what I wanted? Or, oh, my God, like, I'm still going to want my cake tomorrow, though. Yeah. Because when I set my set sight on something, this is my brain. I'm, I want that thing. And until I get that thing, I'm not going to feel satisfied. So, again, it's like, yeah, I love you. Thanks. But also, you're being weird. Like, why'd you do that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why you did that. Like, I'm, I love cheesecake. That's what my mom buys me every year for my birthday. I love cheesecakes. And my mom, this last time I was home, she goes, okay, I bought you a cheesecake, but it's different. I go, tell me. She goes, it's a pistachio cheesecake. I was like, I love pistachio. Go mom. And she goes, yeah, but the crust is a little different, so you might not like it. See how she warns me? Do you see how my mom loves me enough that she warns me? You might not like your birthday cake. Oh, my God. Thank you. I'll try it anyways. Oh, yeah. Okay, it was a little different, but I actually kind of liked it. But okay, I could see why you thought I wouldn't like it. It's like I'm saying to her, thank you for making the effort. But she's also saying you might not like it. And again, we're pretty anxiety as a family. So we are extra considerate of people because we want to clarify we love you, but I might have made a mistake. <laughs> so maybe that's a part of it. I'm not punishing you for making an effort. I'm just wondering why you didn't consider the person you were making the effort for. You know? It's just like interesting, but I think it's both people's trauma hitting each other too. Because if you grew up in a home where like everything you did wasn't good enough, then, and then you grew up in a home where people were considerate of your feelings to such a degree, if those two people dated, they would just trigger each other's trauma. You know what I mean? Like those, they would absolutely trigger each other's trauma. So I have a feeling the people are de divisive or decisive or indis the people are picking sides about the story because each person is telling their trauma. I'm coming from a home that was very thoughtful and considerate about the details and highly anxious, highly anxious. So we were always like, did I fuck up? And then we tried our best not to versus a home where everything you did wasn't good enough. That's different. You know what I mean? That's a different. So they're like, there's never gratitude. There's never like, oh, thank you for trying. And I have a feeling the reason people are like so emotional about this is because it's probably rooted in some sort of trauma. You know me, I think everything's trauma. But to be fair, I mean, how is everything not trauma? You know what I mean? Just listen to people's stories about growing up, hearing their father's footsteps and getting nervous. My mom was never home. I didn't even see her. Oh my God, my grandma killed dogs and peed on the floor. Nobody thought it was weird think that's not trauma like what are we talking about here listen to your life listen to your life story you know abby says i understand being upset if she intentionally went against what he asked for oh but how did she not right but she may have misunderstood his request ah then she's stupid do you know what i'm saying so is she stupid or malicious because i'm okay with stupid maybe when it comes to cake but that's what i'm saying she specifically asked him what he wanted and she either maliciously went against what he wanted or she's stupid. And I think being stupid is much better. I would rather have stupid, right? Right? Discord says, I envision a relationship where our initial ego, I, ick, egoic reactions are the subjective. Oh no, start again. I envision a relationship where our initial egoic reactions are the subject of curiosity used to afford deeper connected connectedness between us instead of the cause of knee jerk lashings out and a continued feedback loop of disconnection i agree god could you write in more poetry yes i agree you 
God, beautiful poet. You're so beautiful. Yes, absolutely. That is, hopefully, these misunderstandings are um, a opportunity for us to know each other more and to love each other more. Hopefully. But usually they end up in fights because people don't want to know each other more. And they don't want to have that conversation, right? What do you guys think about that? I agree 100%. Yeah. That hopefully these are opportunities to be like, I'm so sorry. What's going on? Tell me about it. Why do you feel this way? Fishy says, so if you ask me what I want and don't want, and I give you an answer, assuming you're close to me, I will expect that you remembered, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's what it is too. I Well, why'd you ask in the first place, right? CJ says, what about proposing? There's a video of a woman proposing to her boyfriend in front of their families. He said no because he was upset that she was the one that proposed and not him. Yeah, fuck it. Dump her. <clears throat> Dump her. They're not compatible. Dump her. That's so fucked up. Not only that, what about this? Women who say do not propose to me in public and men do it anyways. Dump them. You do not share values. Dump them. 100%. They're not cruel people, but they're so not compatible. They're going to make you feel fucked for the rest of your life, bro. Yeah, dump them. Madam Jen says, I want a warning and maybe an explanation of what prevented you from doing what you said you would. Yeah, same. I would just be so curious. Though, like, what the fuck happened, bro? You ran out of money? Like, what happened? Isn't stupid a bit harsh? Maybe she misheard. So in order for her to mishear, lots of things would go wrong, right? Like a lot of things would have to go wrong. I want a chocolate on chocolate cake. Hey, babe, I want a chocolate on chocolate cake. Okay, I'll put vanilla in it. Can you, how would she mishear it? Yes, we could assume she would mishear it, but how many things would have to go wrong? Did he text message it to her? Was it a conversation? Was she not listening intently? If I was getting someone a gift and I in any way doubted myself, that means she didn't even double check. She didn't doubt herself. She didn't make sure. If he says, I want chocolate on chocolate cake, devil foods cake, which is a chocolate on chocolate cake, traditionally, right? It's like saying, I want a cheesecake and be like, oh, she misheard and thought she said cheese fritter. It's like, what? You know what I mean? So maybe she could have misheard. And what's wrong with being stupid, right? We're all stupid when it comes to things. I feel like we need to recontextualize the word stupid because like sometimes I'm stupid as fuck and I don't, do not expect me to do this because I'm dumb as fuck and I don't know what you're doing, what you're talking about. Brit says, I think she just thought it would have been a nice surprise. I don't know if it's malicious or dumb. Yeah, I think they're just not compatible then. Because again, it might be a nice surprise. Unless you don't know your partner enough, maybe they're newly dating. Maybe she doesn't know him enough to know like he had an expectation. Maybe they haven't had the conversation yet, right? Walk away man says, do we know if this was the first time she did that? I don't know. Same with the sister cake situation. A lot of people thought, I bet the sister does this a lot. But I'm not sure that's true. You know, Charles says maybe they were out of that cake. Well, she baked the cake. They both baked the cake in both examples. They made it from scratch. That's the whole point is like, they couldn't have been out of the cake. She baked it. But also, why wouldn't you just warn your partner? Like, hey, I couldn't get the cake you wanted. You know? CJ says, I think you have to consider each other to pick your battles because some things are more important than others. I think some things are more important than others. But for me, small considerations are huge in a relationship because I can do everything on my own. The only benefit to having a partner is having someone that shares my values and connects on the little stuff. I pay my own bills. I do my own shit. I'm totally independent. When you're very independent, especially the best part about having a person in your life is that they're considerate about the small things. So I guess in that capacity, like your effort isn't going to matter. I think that's why, like, especially as a person who has her shit together, like the thought doesn't count, right? Like the thought only counts, I think, when you're, I I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, like, the th what do you mean? We could just go get what we, exactly what we want. You don't have to do the thought is what counts. Like the thought is always what counts, but also the thought is what counts. But then the thinking is like, what was your thought process here? Getting a cake I didn't ask for. You know, what was the thought process then? If the thought is what counts, then what was her thought process going into this? You know, what was her reasoning? Why didn't she say something? When he said, when she said, oh, like, I, I didn't like the cake. Why did she, why didn't she say like, oh my God, why not? Or why didn't he, like, they should have had a conversation about like, I thought it was going to be chocolate on chocolate. 
And then she would have said, oh, I thought Vanilla would have been nice. And then he would have said, okay, well, it's not exactly what I wanted, though. And she would have said, I'm so sorry. Like, my bad. Next time, I will get you exactly what you want. But then if that triggers her, they're not compatible. Because if that triggers her, then him making a request for what he actually wants is not good for her. And she needs to break up with him. So I think it's valid from her perspective to say, oh, yeah, he was very like, well, I didn't ask for this. Well, if that's the case, don't be with him. Because I could hear it in both tones. I could hear him being like entitled and I can hear him being disappointed. I can hear her being entitled and I can hear her being disappointed. So the question is, which one is it? Because if I did that, it would be malicious. Let me tell you, if my friend said I wanted chocolate on chocolate cake and I put vanilla in it, I hate you, bitch. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I literally hate you. <laughs> I just, that's what I'm saying. I could never do that. I could make mistakes and I would literally be so anxious about it. I'd be like, I think I fucked up. I think I literally fucked up. I can feel it. I think I fucked up. Like I would, if somebody says this isn't what I wanted, I'd be like, I'm so fucking sorry. I am so fucking sorry. Holy shit. I can't believe I fucked up on your birthday, bro. My bad. And then he'd be like, oh my God, it's no big deal. I'm like, no, let's go fucking get the cake you wanted. Because that's the environment I grew up in, which is like, holy fuck, I'm so sorry, dude. Let me fucking make it right. Right? Like, I couldn't fuck up on a cake you specifically requested because I'm too anxious. My trauma is so anxiety inducing that I'm so afraid of not getting you the cake you wanted because I don't want to fucking be, I don't want to over promise to people because it feels weird. You know, it feels like a lie, which might be my neurodivergency more than anything. I really hate lying. Kenny, join the uh, memberships. Let's go. Eat the cupcake. Let's go. So again, it's like, is it your neurodivergency? Is it your trauma? Is it your culture? Is it expectation? Because I couldn't do something like that on, it would have to be on purpose, right? You know, Britt says she explained that the last time he made vanilla cake and he liked it or she made it. So I think it was out of good intention. It was always out of good intention, guys. The dilemma is that your good intention isn't good enough. I don't think good intentions, I think they're good enough for the explanation. When your parents beat the fuck out of you because you're gay, they have very good intentions. When your mom makes fun of the way you look because she wants you to have more confidence, that's good intentions. Or it's bad intentions. I beat the fuck out of you because I'm a fucking homophobe. Or I beat the, or I make fun of the way you look because I want you to feel bad about yourself. Both can have good intentions or bad intentions. The idea is, are we willing to have a conversation that actually says whether it was a good intention or a bad intention, right? I hate says very, uh, I agree or agreed the communication wasn't clear enough and very emotional, but both intentions are understandable. Assuming she has a good reason why she couldn't make the cake he wanted, for sure. See how there's not probably bad intention on anyone, but that's the problem is like, if you put those two good people together, they're going to feel like the other one is abusing them. He's going to feel like she's neglecting her and she's going to feel like he's entitled. But they're probably both good people. And that's why I say being good isn't enough. Being in love isn't enough. Being friends isn't enough. Excuse me. You have to go over and beyond to know the consciousness you are engaging with enough to be thoughtful about them. Honestly, I'm going to be real with you. If people get me a gift, it's probably going to end up in the trash or at Goodwill. Because like unless you get me a gift that's specifically for my consciousness... I don't want clutter in my home. So you can buy me a gift if you want, but there is n there is possibly a chance it ends up not in my house. Because again, like I love you, but I'm going to hurt the fuck out of your feelings and give it to somebody else if you were not thoughtful in the first place about getting me a gift. Because like I don't want clutter in my house. I don't want unnecessary gifts in my house. So isn't that funny how we limit ourselves? Can you imagine giving a gift to a person and being like, you have to keep it forever, bitch. And I'm like, I'm not keeping your fucking gift. I feel like you're imprisoning me right now. Okay. I feel like you're holding me hostage with your gift. I don't want it. <laughs> okay. Don't buy me gifts. Guess says maybe it's a combination of intention and impact depending on the situation. For me, I can't value intention or impact higher as it depends on the situation. I agree with that. I agree with that. Ultimately, it's about context. So I can go with the flow a lot of the time, but I would be lying to you if I said I haven't absolutely had like a mental break shutdown because... I expected something that didn't happen. Like it would be a lie. I can go with the flow a lot of the time, especially if I expect to go with the flow. If I tell myself like we're going with the flow, Brittany, expect nothing. I'm good to go. But if I've like built myself up, I'm like, holy fuck. What do you mean we're not getting cake today? What do you mean? 
Call. Call every bakery. We're getting cake today. Then I just have to put up with it in the end, too. I'm not going to take it out on people, but I might shut down for a bit. Ingrid says, I've had to have this conversation with my friends because they were upset I donated the Christmas gifts to charity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ultimately, peace and love. If you love the consciousness you're talking to, you have to consider them and be honest with them. I tried to just be honest. I can't do this for you. I love you, but I can't be this kind of friend. Or, ooh, we need to negotiate that expectation because I can't do it. Like, and again, most people don't do this. Most people play a silent game of accept the gift and smile and then donate it secretly without them knowing. Or, you know what I mean? Like, um, there's, just, you know what I'm saying? Some people think regifting is like the worst thing ever. Some people think like, um, they just have all these rules and constructs around gift giving that's exhausting to me. I don't want to play your games. Games are fun and I'm happy to play some games. I don't want to play those ones. Discord says gifts are a demand, aren't they? They explain so much. They are. They are. That's why I know I'm neurodivergent as fuck too. Because all these normies are like, oh my God, you got a gift. How fun. I don't need your free shit, bitch. I don't fucking want your free shit. Everyone I talk to is like, but Brittany, free shit. I don't need free shit. I'm not that poor. I don't need free shit. I'm not that desperate. I don't need free shit. I don't need that clutter. Like, mm -mm. no me. I don't want your free shit. Nope. But some people are like, but it's free. I'm like, no, nope, I'm good. Discord says catching up. But this is why I like the expectation of my bubble that if you want this level of specificity, you can handle your own arrangements. If you let someone else handle planning, it's assumed that they will consider your input and try their best. Ooh, but don't be rude if they can't do everything exactly as you would have. OK, fair. OK to communicate disappointment, but don't forget the other person's feelings and effort if you want them to help again in the future. I think that's fair. Rock says, how am I supposed to trust you when you say you'll pick up the kids when you can't even pull off getting the right cake? Now, to be fair, there is some of that. In some toxic infantilization, infantilization bubbles of men specifically who are incapable, I think there is a toxic side of that of like, if he can't even clean the house, can he really like help you change your diaper? If he can't figure out laundry, is he really going to like... And that's, that is about values. It's not about the specificity. It's about the values. So I have a value of, I rely on my husband. He's the first partner that I've dated, man, male partner that I, women are great. He's the first male partner that I've dated that I don't have to mom. And I don't have to like ask him if he did something. You know what I'm saying? Like he just either does it or explains why something didn't get done or explains when he's going to do it, but he doesn't overpromise, and I don't have to look over his shoulder and I don't have to mom him and he's just got it figured out. And that's saying a lot. So in the past, I used to date men and they'd say, well, my intention counted, right? And I'd be like, you know, maybe not. Maybe fucking not, you know? Maybe your intention doesn't count in this regard. I think it does in a lot of places. You know me. I'm so lenient on people because I'm like, what was your intention? But the truth is, is I don't know if people are introspective enough to even know your intentions. But yeah, I've had lots of people basically make my day harder with their good intentions. And I do think the road to hell is paved in good intentions. So I think your intentions matter, but you also can't be upset if I put down boundaries and I see you less. If my sibling or or somebody in my life continually got me gifts that weren't giving me anxiety, I would probably cut off communication with them or say like, no more gifts. And if you give me another gift, I'm going to cut off communication with you. Like if you're going to choose to give me a gift over maintaining this friendship, I don't need your gift or your friendship. So I think it depends on your lived experience, right? I think it depends on your lived experience, what you think expectation is, what the scenario is itself. Again, these people could be so well-intentioned. They could actually be, some people, that's good enough. I know some people that are like, that is so sweet. Look at the effort they made. I'm like, cool, cute. Some people, that's good enough. Cool. Date those people, right? Like date those people. And that's what I, what I want to say with this whole conversation is like date those people, be friends with those people, because otherwise you're possibly going to feel kind of fucking gaslit the whole time because it feels fucking weird to expect something out of a person. And by the way, you have to negotiate. You have to communicate. No reading minds either. I hate that shit. I've had friends be like, I'm upset with you. And I'm like, okay, why? And they're like, um, can you guess? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to fucking guess. But because their love language is like guessing, they want to be loved in that way. And I, I'm not going to love you in that way, bro. 
I'm not going to guess why your feelings are hurt. You just got to tell me, right? And then I'll do my best to correct behavior. But some people think it's romantic or it's it's like, oh, my friend knows me so well, they even can tell I'm upset with them today. And I'm like, Ooh. you get to sign up for your friendships and you get to sign up for your relationships. If you don't like them, move on. Yui said, if someone got got you new streaming equipment as a gift, would you consider that clutter? Um, It depends. It depends on the scenario. Did I need it? Did I want it? Did I ask for it? Uh, is it what I wanted? You know, so maybe, but it might feel overwhelming. It might feel bad. You know what I mean? I don't know. I would never, first of all, it's expensive. And second of all, they're probably going to downgrade me because my shit is expensive and I got some of the best, like, for what I'm doing with it. So, like, if you get me a gift, are you upgrading my system? Because that's like a $4,000 gift. And if you're getting me a $4,000 gift, like, why? So it's not that easy as to say like, oh, if somebody got you a new streaming, like what, what are you buying me? You know what I mean? What are you buying me? You know, Raven says the clutter is so real. I'm a minimalist and I hate getting physical gifts because of clutter. Like literally. Mm -mm. Amira says it depends on how close I am to the person. I know how to talk to the people in my bubble without hurting them. If it's an outside person, I wouldn't bother to be honest for the sake of being honest. Yeah, yeah, true. I'm happy to fake with most people, like sp especially strangers or with people in general if they get me gifts. But that's the question. If you want someone to be closer to you, are you willing to hear their their feedback? And again, to be fair with the cake scenario, I think the sister handled it really well. But the couple handled it very poorly. They didn't obviously have the tools to communicate and say, oh, um, this isn't what I expected. Is that OK? Like, you know what I mean? Yui says, so you don't like gift at all? I almost never like gifts. I almost never like them. I usually like the people who give it to me. Like some people are really thoughtful. Like my friend recently got me a going away gift and it was like a bookmark and other things I could use. And I was like, oh, that's really thoughtful because like I love to read. I need bookmarks all the time. Um, that's a good gift. You know what I mean? Or sometimes like if it, it fits my lifestyle and that makes sense or it's like when someone buys you an art piece, but it's not your style, but they're like, it's like, okay, it's like if somebody bought me a rainbow and went, you're gay, here's a rainbow and it's six feet tall and it goes in your living room. I'd be like, I don't have rainbows in my house. Like I'm not that kind of gay. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of thoughtful, but it's also kind of not thoughtful because like, I don't want a six foot rainbow in my room or in my house. So it's like, it kind of is about me, but it's not really about me, right? So even when they get you a gift that almost sounds right, it's not exactly right. Like I said with the video game example, just because I get my boyfriend, my boyfriend, just because I get my husband a video game, well, what if I get a video game that doesn't even work with his system? That's kind of fucked up. Yeah, he likes video games, but if I get him one that doesn't even, isn't even compatible with his technology, what is that? You know what I mean? What is that? And also, guys, if you come from a bubble that expects birthday gifts and stuff, it's anxiety inducing. You know what my friends and I had to negotiate as we aged? Only some of my friends and I used to get gifts for one each other, one another. And then I said, hey, can, we're done with that, right? Like we're aging out of it. I don't want to do birthday gifts for the rest of our life. That's so much work. Maybe a birthday card. Maybe I love you. Maybe a phone call. But like, okay, so in my 20s, I have besties that I've gotten gifts for their whole life. But as I've aged, I'm like, we're done with that, right? We're done. Like, we're adults. I can't just be sending you stuff, okay? We're adults. We're done. Charles says, I've gotten so many video games for the wrong systems. My expectations are zero forever. See, I don't, I don't live, I don't want to live my life like that either. I do not want people in my life that I have no expectation of. I have very specific expectations of the people in my life. Accurate ones. I have accurate ones. The expectation of not having an expectation is an expectation. Keep that in mind. Chan says, I like to celebrate, but not being the center of it. I have groups of friends that don't like each other so well, so I wouldn't, I couldn't invite them all. Mm. Yeah, I don't mind having a birthday party the way my mom raised us having it, which was like, it was a celebration for everybody. Cause I also don't want to be the center of attention in like a very birthday girl way. Like I don't play, like we didn't, I grew up with a lot of siblings. I didn't prefer that. I don't think any of my siblings really prefer being the center of attention. I think we just like to celebrate with each other. Come over, it's my birthday, bitch. I'm gonna beat your ass on Smash. That's usually what we do for birthday parties. Come over, bitch. I'm gonna beat your game of video games, bitch. And then mom and dad watch us play video games and yell at each other. And it's kind of nice. And then we have discussions or, you know, drink chai or eat cake. 
But yeah, I don't want to be like the birthday, which is fine if you are. Some bubbles really like the birthday's everything. You get balloons and a limo and you do you. But like I literally don't care about any of that. But like some people do, which is okay and valid and, you know, it's a cultural thing because like I wouldn't raise my kids expecting that. But maybe my kids would hate me and be like, I never got a birthday with candles or with like, well, not candles or with balloons with my age. I don't know. Who knows? Bubbles. It's all about them bubbles. All about the bubbles. You know, I'm again, nobody's really the bad guy here. It's just like, mm, mm, you know, you know. Ah, Kenny says, inconsiderate, I can't date inconsiderate people, hurts my feelings too much. And this is really what it's about. It would hurt my feelings. And I don't know why my partner would consistently try to hurt my feelings. Like, it hurts my feelings. You got me the wrong cake. And it's like, you should be grateful. But my feelings are hurt. Well, you're entitled. Okay. Well, then I don't want to be here anymore. <gasps> I can't believe you don't want to be here. I got you a birthday party and I got you a cake. Don't you care about my intentions? And it's like, I don't feel good. I feel icky and I want to go home. <laughs> I don't want to do this. So I'm going to be real. It's about feelings in, in reverse as well. Oh, I made you a cake. You don't like it? No, I hate it, right? It's not what I wanted. It's like, oh, that hurts my feelings. Well, I don't care about your feelings. I wanted what I wanted. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't good enough. And it's like, yeah, you weren't good enough. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go home. Joy, great question. It's the thought that counts opens up the question as to who the gift is actually for to me. Like, whose feelings are we considered of here? Well, I think both, but probably the person receiving the gift more. What do you guys think about that? Rock says, like, if you never asked me what cake I wanted and just got me a random cake, I would never consider it, uh, uh, not thoughtful. The part that makes it weird is asking what I wanted then ignoring it. Same. I would never think it was not thoughtful to get me a cake randomly, though I would be like, oh, I might not eat that. I'm so sorry. But also, why do you ask if you were going to get the wrong gift? Gaming says it was such a small thing in my mind. There's no way it was a mistake. Interesting. So not that the cake being a mistake is a small thing and we shouldn't blow it out of proportion, but that getting it wrong is such a simple thing that it's like, how could you do it wrong? Is that what you mean? That's the thing is like, that's why I try not to judge people the way I judge myself. Because I, I know if I did something like this, it'd be pretty malicious. But if somebody else did it, it probably wouldn't be as malicious. Like there's just no way I would get it wrong because I would be so anxious. I would consistently be like, just double checking. This is what you want, right? Just double checking. This is what you want, you know? But other people wouldn't think that. So they're probably not maliciously thinking about it. But I does feel malicious. But it probably isn't malicious. But it does feel malicious. Like, I want to say it's malicious, but I think that's my bias saying it's malicious. Because, like, again, how could I do this without it being malicious? You know what? I, so, again, everyone is different, and that's the point of the story. Everyone is so different that Kate Gate could either be the reason you end a friendship or a relationship. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da, 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 da.